I've been on many guided history tours. You'll find them in most of the big towns and cities in Britain. But have you noticed they rarely mention any black people or their place in British history? If you take a walk around your nearest town or city, you can find clues to the local black history, often in the names of the older shops, cafes or even the streets. You'll find the contribution of black people to British history and society goes back centuries. The influence is everywhere, it's all around you in the streets, the buildings, the architecture, but people walk past it every single day and don't even notice it. But the fact is, it's all around you if you know where to look. Where's the African influence in this quiet English square? It's something you'll find in many village greens, cemeteries and at war memorials. It's got ancient spiritual significance and it's of African design. And it's this thing right here. You can find imitation obelisks like this one all around Britain most often in key locations that hold a particular significance. The original obelisks date back thousands of years to Africa where they were placed outside temples, probably as symbols of rebirth. So it's interesting that they now commonly appear in cemeteries and in particular as war memorials. In 1963, Martin Luther King gave his inspiring I Have a Dream speech in front of an imitation obelisk called the Washington Monument. This obelisk is referred to as Cleopatra's Needle, although it was built long before she was even born. It's 21 meters tall, it weighs 180 tons, and it's carved a solid rock 3,500 years ago. Here's a question, how old is London? London's roughly 2,000 years old. So it means that people in Africa were capable of producing things like this using their art, science, technology 1,500 years before London even existed. 